Welcome in to Outkick the Show. I'm your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope all of you are having fantastic Mondays. Big game tonight between the Tennessee Volunteers and the Texas A&M Aggies for a college baseball national championship. I am back from Omaha, landed last night after watching games on Saturday and Sunday. I know, I know. I had my kids with me. My wife said they had to come back. So that is why I am here. That is why I will be watching the game from my house tonight. The Vols are going to win 10-3. to Blood bank guarantee. Get your bets in right now. Better pitching. Bats are awoken. It's going to be hot. The ball is going to travel well. Four home runs from Tennessee. Super specific details from me here. And Tennessee is going to win the national championship tonight. I had an amazing time in Omaha. I want to say thank you to Tennessee fans, Texas A&M fans. I had my family with me. Listeners on KFAB, where we are number one in the market in Omaha. You were all fabulous. I met so many of you. Not one negative word from anyone anywhere that I went in Omaha had my 13-year-old and my 9-year-old with me. Also was with a couple of friends who had their kids. Uh, just an amazing time. Got to go into Rocco's. Some of you may have seen the video of me, which we can cut and share, I'm sure. Tennessee right now has the Jello shot lead. It goes to charity. I bought a uh, 1,000 Jello shots, $5,000 tab. Gave a thousand dollar tip to the bartender there, so they got six k of my money. Distributed it all throughout Rocco's. A lot of Aggies took them. They were willing to drink some orange, uh, uh, some orange colored uh, alcohol uh, in the Jello shots. But just a tremendous time. Um, loved getting to hang out. First time to stay and spend the night in Omaha. I'd been to one game before. Flew in and out that day. Uh, but just a fantastic time. Thank you for all the uh, heartfelt greetings, welcome, uh, the uh, the warm uh, friendship. I mean, just just fantastic, really cool. Um, and I don't know, uh, you know, everything kind of continues to roll. Whether it's Fox News, whether it's Outkick, whether it's Clay and Buck, this show, uh, all the different social feeds, Outkick.com. We've just, we've just created, and it's great to see, every time I go to a sporting event, the number of you that are consuming our content continues to grow. Just an absolute juggernaut we have built, and I got a couple of takes on that uh, right off the top. Again, I think the Vols win four home runs. Uh, the, the ball is going to travel well in Omaha where it's going to be white hot. It was so hot yesterday. Got to give credit to my boys uh, that were sitting in that sun uh, I know a lot of your kids, if they were in there, I mean, it was as hot of a sporting event as you can basically have. The game started at 1 o'clock, smoldering weather in Omaha. Uh, so uh, the Travis boys handled it well, well-behaved all around. Um, and uh, I hope some of you watching this enjoyed the uh, the Jello shot. Speaking of outkicks growth, uh, big news. Uh, we have hired Ricky Cobb, who runs the Super 70 Sports Twitter account has almost a million followers. I think one of the most consistently funny guys on social media. Um, He's a former uh, college professor, super smart guy, uh, basically talks about how awesome the 70s, 80s, and 90s big sports are, big sports were, big sports fan. He's going to be doing a show with us at OutKick. And if you start to look at the roster of shows that we have built, in addition to reading OutKick.com, whether it's Tommy, whether it's with Rowan Hutton, uh, Charlie in the morning show right now. Uh, we have a Dan Dakich just killing it. And soon we're going to have an additional show. We're going to have all day programming for you. You're going to be able to consume our content, whether it's written or video or audio, all day with a big outkick network that we are continuing to, big out, to, to build out. And I think that Ricky Cobb is going to be a uh, big part of that network that we are continuing to build out. So 
Um, it's going to be really cool to see. I think you guys are going to enjoy his show. Welcome, Ricky Cobb, Super 70 Sports to, uh, to OutKick. And if you're not following that account, uh, I think that you will really enjoy it. And it just speaks to the continued growth of OutKick and the talent that we're able to attract. Um, so I am super excited about that and where we're headed. Speaking of that, um, some of you may have seen the story. Axios broke today. Uh, one of the things that I'm very optimistic about is you're seeing, for instance, the Washington Post collapse. They forced out an editor. Uh, they're trying, Jeff Bezos, the owner, trying to put people in to keep the company from losing $100 million a year. Washington Post on track to lose $77 million this year. Their audience is cut in half. Subscriptions have been collapsing. So they brought in someone new to try to create uh, a somewhat successful business there. And, uh, and it's not working very well. What I am seeing, and I'm very optimistic about this, is first of all, without Rupert Murdoch, there's no marketplace of ideas in America today. So Rupert Murdoch, whatever your thoughts are on Fox News, Wall Street Journal, New York Post, tons of other media outlets, including now OutKick, whatever your thoughts are on those brands and those outlets, Rupert Murdoch created diversity of opinion in America. Without him, there almost would not have been any. I know The Blaze is out there. I know Daily Wire, but those are relatively recent additions. For much of the 90s and the 2000s, without Rupert Murdoch, there is no marketplace of ideas in America. So I think he's a legend um, and incredible successful businessman on top of that. Reason why I bring that up is um, I'm cautiously optimistic that other people are following in Rupert Murdoch's wake and just trying to find a marketplace of ideas. Elon's purchase of Twitter, I thought, was very significant for that fact. Um, and there's another move that's going on. Some of you may have paid attention to it. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy has bought a substantial stake in uh, BuzzFeed. And his goal with BuzzFeed, he's written about this. I'm not divulging anything particularly unique. I'd encourage you to go read the, uh, the piece that he wrote. Uh, is He wants to have diversity of thought at BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed brought the Steele dossier to America. Um, d discredited Steele dossier. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that BuzzFeed is not really known for diversity of opinion. And so Vivek believes that that could be a strong point to grow their business. They're struggling as a business right now. You can go look it up. Uh, it's no great surprise that the stock prices is, is what it is. Vivek has bought a substantial stake. Today, Axios broke the news that Vivek has asked myself, Patrick Bet David uh, and Chris Balf to be board members of BuzzFeed. And I think uh, what he wants us to do, I don't think I know this, is to provide diversity of thought to the BuzzFeed board so that the BuzzFeed board can more accurately reflect a variety of opinions across the American landscape and media. Smart move. Uh, I, I think for any outlet that wants to be large. Now, I'm not sure whether it's going to happen, whether Patrick Bet David. Uh, Chris Balfour for me are going to be added to the board, but I told uh, Vivek that I would be uh, happy to be considered. BuzzFeed board will make their decision. A lot of decisions that I'll be making in the years ahead, but I'm going to keep doing shows and keep being as honest with you as I can every single day. So we'll see what happens with that. But certainly um, I would like to be involved in creating diversity of thought across as many different aspects of the media as I can. I think we've done it with Sports Talk Radio. I think we've done it with the OutKick network that we built out. I think we've done it with Clay and Buck. We've done it with OutKick.com. Um, and uh, Fox bought a very valuable, in my opinion, asset. And we have grown a lot in the three years that Fox has owned OutKick. And I suspect that that growth will continue uh, to be very substantial. And the brand that we built, strong. And every time I go out to a sporting event, I'm reminded of that anew because so many of you come up and say, man, I love OutKick. I love Clay and Buck. Uh, I love the content that you guys put out on a day daily basis. It's gratifying. The market is responding in a positive way to the content that we're putting out, which is the goal of any media company. Grow your audience. Have an impact. Be honest. Like I've always said, smart, original, funny, and authentic wins. That's what I've seen since the moment I started writing on the internet. If you can be smart, original, funny, and authentic, all four, you're going to absolutely kill it. But if you can provide at least one of those things, you'll succeed. 
and we're stacking together a lot of pretty good days uh, at OutKick that can grow into something pretty substantial. So I'm excited to welcome uh, Ricky Cobb, excited about Super 70 Sports and the, uh, the growth that we have uh, out there. A lot of stuff going on. Um, Caroline Levitt, we just had her on OutKick about an hour, sorry, on Clay and Buck about an hour ago. She got kicked off of CNN this morning uh, for saying, truthfully, that Jake Tapper and Dana Bash, the two moderators of the CNN debate, uh, are actually far left-wing ideologues who have called and compared Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler and the Nazi regime, uh, the MAGA party, the Nazi regime. It's very fair. Uh, if they're going to be the, nom- uh, the moderators of the debate, it's important to understand whether your umpires effectively are going to call balls and strikes or if they're going to have an unfair strike zone. It's quite clear that Trump is not going to get a fair uh, umpiring. In fact, I think it's going to be Trump versus three, right? Dana Bash is, her, uh, is affiliated with Joe Biden. Her husband helped advocate for, oh, the intelligence agents are uh, trying to protect us. The Hunter Biden laptop is fake. Yeah. Go figure. Um, And then you got Jake Tapper, who is a left-wing activist. So I expect for the questions to be very unfair. I even wonder whether Joe Biden's team is going to get the questions in advance. That's how unfair I think this will be. If you think that is an unfair accusation, we know that Democrats before have been able to get the questions and given them to Hillary Clinton, allegedly, to be able to help her campaign. So I think it's a very valid concern the Trump team might have. But I think Caroline Levitt actually managed to expose CNN uh, because by taking her off the air, they made her accusations far more viral than they ever would have been if they allowed her to speak. Um, And it reminded me of when CNN kicked me off the air about seven years ago. My career has exploded in growth in that time frame. Uh, Back in 2017, I was on CNN talking about uh, Jamel Hill and the fact that she had called Trump a white supremacist. I was actually defending Jamel Hill's uh, free speech rights. And when I did, I said I believed in only two things completely, the First Amendment and boobs. And I got kicked off CNN. I haven't been back in seven years. Since that happened to me in 2017, I've written a couple of best-selling books. Uh, I've sold my company uh, and become a hundred millionaire. Uh, I am now on the biggest radio show in the country, and I'm regularly on Fox News, which is the most watched cable network in America, regularly outrating MSNBC and CNN combined. I think it's fair to say that things have gone very well for me since then. Uh, That, to me, is what happens when you refuse to apologize for your honest opinions or, for that matter, for your jokes. Uh, You know, laughing is a good thing. People should uh, laugh more. And I think you're seeing more and more comedians coming around on the side of Trump or at least the side of sanity by saying this idea that we're going to cancel comedians for jokes we don't like is patently absurd. Um, So uh, I think that what happened to Caroline Levitt is actually very beneficial to Trump. I think she's put on notice Jake Tapper and Dana Bash and made their past statements even more newsworthy than they would have been if she never said anything at all or if they had even allowed her to go out there and do the uh, entirety of the interview and just say what she thought. CNN's not above criticism. I'm not above criticism. People can take shots at me all the time. They do it only online, by the way. Uh, It is funny that in basically my entire life as a public figure, all I get is positive comments face-to-face. If you walked around with me in Omaha, you'd be like, my goodness, Clay Travis's approval rating is 100%. Not one single negative word. A&M fans everywhere. They know I'm rooting for Tennessee. Fabulous fan base. They still like me, still like OutKick. Tennessee fans. Not one single negative word. I bet I posed, and I'm not even betting, I'm sure, that I posed for hundreds of photos uh, while I was walking around in Omaha. Um, You know, bought a thousand Jell-O shots. A million and change of people have watched that video by itself. Um, All positive. And so I'm very skeptical of negativity online in general because I don't think it's representative of the actual American marketplace. I think most of the content, uh, much of the content, I should say, on Twitter in particular, 
tends to skew far left wing. And I don't know what the latest data would reflect, but the data reflected that the people who acted and posted most frequently on Twitter were actually further left wing than Portland, Oregon residents to kind of put you in a perspective of where Twitter was. Maybe it's adjusted somewhat now that Elon is in charge. I don't know that it would have, but it just further confirms for me that my thesis, which was and has been for a long time, Twitter's not real life. I'm going to do and run a company that is not designed to be popular on Twitter and will actually be very popular in the real world and not popular on Twitter. First of all, I think we're now kind of popular on Twitter. Uh, but the real world, people love us. I mean, this is the reality. And there's not even that much negativity on Twitter now. Like, I, I just, I barely get any negativity. I think we're winning a lot of battles that matter. And I think sanity is coming back to the forefront. And I believe that in a little over four months, you're going to see that reflected in the election results coming out in November of 2024. Now, we'll see. Could I be wrong? Certainly. Uh, but I am optimistic that sanity is going to take back over in America uh, in about four months. And I know regardless, our company has dominated and grown no matter who the president is. Uh, OutKick did well when Barack Obama was president. OutKick did well when Donald Trump was president. OutKick has probably done best of all while Joe Biden has been president. And if Trump wins or Biden somehow wins re-election or they replace Biden, guess what? I think we're going to continue to grow and dominate. A um, couple of other stories that are out there. Um, PGA Green got stormed. I just want to ask you a question. I tweeted this, but I want you to think about it. I was born in April of 1979. I am 45 years old. In my life as a person who is cognizant of protest, 1980s, 1990s, 2000s, 2010s, question for you. Has anyone ever protested anything that is shown up, marched, uh, trespassed and taken over a green as we just saw at the PGA Tour event this weekend? Has anyone ever shown up and done that and made you, as a result, support their cause more? Now, civil rights protests, long before my time, successful. Since the 1980-ish era, I would argue to you that every single group that has protested has actually made fewer people support them than would have supported them if they had never protested in the first place. If you block my car, if you keep me from driving somewhere, if you show up and storm the field and glue your hand to a basketball court, or if you run on the field at a baseball game to, to argue for something politically, or you run on the 18th green like happened this weekend at the PGA event, I'm going to tell you something. I support your cause less. When you tear up artwork, you don't make me think, hey, global warming, this is something I really should be concerned about. When you uh, show up and deface Stonehenge, you don't make me think, hey, you know what, maybe those climate activists have a case to be made. You actually make me respect you less. Now, look, I'm building a house on the beach right now as we speak. Do you think I would be building a house on the beach if I was concerned that the seas were going to rise and that my house is going to be washed away? I wouldn't. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the seas are going to surge and my house is going to disappear. Awful lot of Hollywood celebrities who are concerned about climate change with beach homes, though. Doesn't seem like when it comes to actually spending their money, they put their money where their mouth is. That's certainly the case when you consider all the people with private jets complaining about all the greenhouse gases. One private jet flight, which I'm happy to take, never going to uh, apologize for, took private jet to and from Omaha, um, never going to apologize for that. I worked hard to have the money to be able to fly private. When it makes sense for me and my family to fly, fly private, I'm going to do it. And I may buy a jet soon. And uh, guess what? I'm going to fly it all over the place. I ain't going to feel bad about it at all. But I'm not a hypocrite. I'm going to build my beach house, not be worried about it. I think the world's going to be fine as long as we keep having kids. That's what I'm actually worried about. Not enough kids. Um, but PGA greenstorming, just... I believe my thesis is correct. No one who has protested anything since 1980, basically my entire life, has changed anybody's mind. In fact, I think protests actually work against you. 
the more you protest, the less support you actually create. Thesis, think about it. A um, couple of other things that are out there. Uh, J.J. Redick. I haven't weighed in on this yet, but I saw a graphic and I thought, you know what? I should weigh in on this. J.J. Redick is now the new coach of the uh, L.A. Lakers. I haven't seen as many people talking about this as I thought that I would. The only coaching experience J.J. Redick has is coaching the fourth grade boys. I'm presuming this was his son at Brooklyn Basketball Academy as a volunteer coach. I am more qualified as a coach based on multiple years of coaching basketball to coach the Lakers than J.J. Redick is. I coached my son for multiple years in uh, his basketball career. I don't know, four or five years, whatever the math is. I am four or five times as qualified based on coaching history as J.J. Redick is. Now, I don't know how old do. Obviously, he's LeBron's podcasting partner. And ESPN elevated him all the way to lead basketball analyst in the NBA because he had some good hits and successful segments on Stephen A. Smith's show. But J.J. Redick is, based on coaching history, I believe, and GM history if you want to factor that in, because I do believe that's valuable, at least in building a roster, the least qualified head coach probably in the history of the NBA. Maybe it won't matter because I don't think the Lakers have that talented of a roster anyway. And basically LeBron at 40 years old is driving the team into a ditch, may force his own son to be drafted here in a few days. But I do think it's intriguing that J.J. Redick, with one year of experience as the fourth grade boys head coach at the Brooklyn Basketball Academy, I know he played in the NBA, but in terms of actual coaching experience, he is the least qualified coach to ever be hired in NBA history, probably. And he has now got one of the most prominent jobs in the history of NBA franchises. So we'll see how J.J. Redick does. But what you're seeing here is top qualification to get drafted, be LeBron's son. Top qualification to be the Lakers head coach, be LeBron's friend. How well is that likely to work out for the Lakers? Eh, I don't think very well. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Vols, I believe, win the national championship tonight, 10-4, to four, four home runs, put it away early, go Big Orange. It's national title time again. And if I'm wrong, congratulations to the Aggies early. It's going to be really tough to say tomorrow if that happens. Uh, all right, I love all you. I'm watching the game tonight. Thank you for all the fabulous things and all the interactions. Uh, that you guys uh, shared with me in Omaha. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for reading. And as always, thanks for rolling with us on OutKick. DBAP, unless you need to SBAP. I'm Clay Travis, and this has been OutKick, the show.